We are in Kings Norton. We are just about Kings Norton Junction on the Stratford Canal, about to go on to the Birmingham and Worcester. Do you know why it's called that? Because uh, it goes from Birmingham to Worcester. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. I didn't know you knew that. Yes. Um, we are going to turn left and head towards... The junction is just... That is the junction. So we will be exiting a waterway onto a new waterway, turning left and relatively quickly getting to a 2,700 yard tunnel. Is that the first one? First of three tunnels today. Um, today is get progressively shorter. Today is a three tunnel kind of day. Yeah. Although we might actually stop between the second tunnel and the third tunnel. Might we? Or just before the second tunnel. Yeah. It's, oh. You know, because, because it, basically there's a very large tunnel, then there's quite a bit of travel, like several miles of travel, and then there's two tunnels that are fairly close together, and the space between them is like about a half mile to a mile, and there might be some mooring in there, and then immediately after, well not immediately, but within a few hundred yards of the last tunnel is the Turdy Biggie flight, which we do not want to get on today. <laughs> we don't want to like accidentally start the flight and have nowhere to moor, so... <laughs> ah, we've accidentally begun the descent into hell. And there's the top lock, and then there's a bit of a gap before the second lock, so we might do one lock and mm -hmm. moor there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Michael turned the page in the Nicholson's guide this morning and was like, because <gasps> <laughs> he saw. <clears> the, <throat> yeah, it's a lot of locks. <laughs> so we're not going to attempt the tardy. A lot of locks, and they're very close together. So yeah, we're not going to attempt the tardy big today. We're going to do that. We're going to attempt to get to the tardy biggie today, yeah. and then we mentally will prepare ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Get up really early someday in the near future and go down it, up it. I'm not sure which no, version. Down it. Down it. Down it. Down it makes more sense. Yeah. <clears throat> we are not doing this one in reverse, which is a good choice on our part. Right. What so, do you mean we're not doing it in reverse? We're not coming back up? Yeah. Yeah, we're looping around. Yeah, we're looping around. So I think it's about three and a half hours today. And it is bloody cold. Yes. Bloody cold. And we're going to have George on the boat for the, at least the first portion to get down here. Well, over if, to the you, tunnel. if the tunnel is quite immediate, then yeah. It's it's about half, about two thirds of a mile from here. Okay, so should I go through and put all the lights on? No. I think so. Alright. Yes. And, and then open I the windows. I don't. Don't have to worry about it. The curtains? Yeah. I'm not opening the windows. No. Open the curtains, turn on the the basic LED lights, um, get those two magnetic lights for us, and then we test this, and then we're ready to go. Okay. Alright. Cool. Let's go. We have a plan. two reservoirs, the upper one and the lower one, and the lower one, the upper one feeds the canal and the lower one was uh, put in place to compensate the farmers for the loss of water that went to the canal, and it turns out the lower one's the prettier, or at least more accessible. And there's there. some moorings on the aqueduct overlooking the reservoirs, nice. yeah. this is the M. Um... And it's not really that right behind us, it's just cameras aren't that good at compensating. Ooh. Look at the boat on the ceiling. This is the M42. Well, it's not, it's the Birmingham and Worcester Canal. But. I think if anybody actually sees me say, ooh, look at the boat on the ceiling, it might lead to some confusion.
All right, so we're going to do a Marty McFly thing and come back to the future. So I'm just in the middle of editing this video and I've realized that we never finished it off. So we're coming back from the future to try and explain why we didn't do it. So what happened was we got through the big long tunnel. Yeah, we were both on the boat. I didn't walk over that one. I didn't enjoy it, but it was okay. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was very long and you were a bit stressed. The first half I just spent looking backwards because that was the closest exit. And then the second half I was no, looking, looking forward. forwards because that's the closest exit. Yeah, <laughs> we got through that. It was just a little bit more stressed than we wanted that day. And we got to Alba Church. Yeah, and I, I discovered, oh, we, we decided we needed toilet paper. We ran out of toilet paper. Yeah. And there was a co-op there. So Michael dropped me off at one bridge well, with the dog and we ran up to the co-op. Well, I continued along around Alva Church Marina, where I stopped and waited for Joe to come back. There was a chip shop in Alva Church as well, so I thought, oh, I'll just take some, grab some chips and take them back and we can have them for lunch. So, got back on board the boat, we set off. I'd been in and out a few times to get various things. Finally sat down and started eating my chips and Michael was like, I wish I had some mayonnaise and vinegar. Yeah, so, so here's the thing. I like condiments. Joe likes dry chips. She likes. I don't chips. like dry chips. I just think chips are nice on their own. Okay. It's like, like well, yeah. mm, dry chips. They're nice on their own. <laughs> but she, she, so every time we go into a chip shop, I have to be, you know, they, oh, do you want some chips and vinegar, or do you want some salt and vinegar? No, just salt, no vinegar, right? So she's starting to eat chips, and I'm trying to eat chips, and I'm just like, yeah, I could, could really use some condiments. And um, and I start hinting that maybe somebody could go get some condiments, and what gets hinted back is maybe I could go get some condiments. <laughs> Which, fair enough, you'd been in and out, and in and out, and in and out, and so, so I was like, okay, I'm I'll go get some condiments. Chips. We left Alva Church Marina. We're coming around a corner. It's not much of a corner. No, it's, it's like a, a slight know, bend. Slight bend, and there's a barge that's kind of partly submerged on one side. And we're coming up to a small aqueduct, so the canal narrows a little bit to go through that. Yeah, but basically there's plenty of room. It's more or less a straight line. There's a tiny bit of a bend coming up. So um, I take the tiller. Michael takes a couple of steps down. I think I made it down maybe two steps, three steps, and I'm I'm like partway to my condiments when all of a sudden the boat just shifts sideways and I slam into the wall. <laughs> So I step forward a couple feet, look through the window. Sure enough, we're completely dead stop. That seems like a reasonable time for me to grab my condiments. And I come to back, and you're telling me that we've... I was like, you've run us aground. Yeah, you said I've run us aground. <laughs> Which was really annoyed him, because he was like, I was inside. Oh, How is it? Really? I'm inside. I've got mayonnaise. I did not have my hand on the tiller. <laughs> my I did not run us into anything. My argument was that I'd literally just, like turned around and grabbed the tiller and we'd stopped so how could it have been my fault because yeah. I, I didn't get a chance uh, to move and the so tiller. the assignment of blame begins a little <laughs> too early before we even figure out what's going on because it doesn't even matter whose fault it was we've come to a complete and total stop but we're not actually touching the ground and standard procedure you know sort of first thing to try is put us into reverse and see if we can pull off of what we assume is sand right yeah, like if theory, we run into silt if you've if you've come to a stop on something you can reverse off it but it just wasn't happening we were gunning the engine every time i was gunning in reverse the boat would start rotating sort of clockwise yeah back out into the middle yeah but only at the front the back would stay where it was and then i'd push forward and we'd go back towards the shore at the front and as we every time we went closer to the shore we'd start to tilt more and every mm -hmm. time we went away we'd start to flatten out a little bit and basically just couldn't figure out at first what the heck it would be. So I grabbed the small stick that we've got, the little gaff, and I went around and just started tapping in to try and figure out, did, had we actually run into like silt? Into the water. Yeah, and, and like all along the front of the boat, it's clear. And then towards the back, I start tapping into something that sounds like metal only on the shore side and it was really narrow it's like here there's nothing and then here's something and then here there's nothing like it was like that big <laughs> whatever it was we hit it was like maybe a couple of inches wide but and it seemed to be made out of stone or metal or something it didn't sort of rebound in any way like you'd expect from like waterlogged wood or anything it was really hard but you couldn't see it we tried for so long to get off and like we just weren't moving and it, we were both starting to think well how on earth are we going to get off like, yeah i think i tried to jump off to shore because we were close enough that you could jump off and i tried pushing a little bit with i think the we yeah ball. we were pushing against the shore to see if we could but yeah but when we were pushing against the shore we were on the high side so you're kind of waiting the boats down yeah on the and tilting it so it really wasn't working so ultimately what ended up happening was joe jumped onto the shore with the pole with the pole put the pole in kind of under us and started to, to sort of lever and push i went on to 
the water side, grabbed onto the handrails at the back, leaned over, <laughs> and started rocking back and forth to try and just. So, as sort of Michael rocked, I pushed, and eventually, well, it happened really quickly. We sort quickly. of walked off whatever this thing was. We yeah. got the boat to walk off of it. And suddenly it's we just swoosh and we go flat. And it's like, oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> but our chips are destroyed at this point. <laughs> so, yeah, we were good to like, 20 minutes, half an hour we were there. Yeah, yeah. We were sitting there for quite a while. And we just passed a big rental hire place. So I'm like a little worried about anybody coming around the corner. And then we get off. And I called the marina uh, to try and explain it to them. And the guy on the phone like was like, Oh, thanks, but nobody ever goes south from here. And he gets into this whole, like, nice enough guy, but he gets into, like, quite a long conversation of trying to explain to me that, like, people only go north. <laughs> Which isn't true, because... <laughs> because, like, we, we passed one of their boats coming north just a later. The reason he said that people don't go south is because, like, higher boats wouldn't do the tardy big, but I don't think that's true. And I called the CRT, and they said they'd get somebody out to check it and everything. But then we passed a couple of boats coming towards us, so we and then had to try to communicate to them, like, stay near the sunken boat basically right but what always happens when you're on you know you're, you're sort of going across each other you, you only have a limited amount of time to have right. a conversation so, over the engine noise so you yell at them and they've all got this look i'm like yeah yeah okay and then they get about halfway along and they're like what did she say and i'm like oh okay so so i end up repeating everything and then we get to the last two tunnels the first one was nice and short and yeah, but and then I got out and I walked over the last one, which I shouldn't have done because it was a massive road. Oh yeah, you have to cross. You have to it, cross right. like four lanes of traffic. Right, and 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 I'm going underneath, and this is the first tunnel I've seen that doesn't have kind of a round profile. So there's places where it it suddenly drops down into like head hitting height. Um, so so I was like ducking a bunch of times, and and basically it was just like okay, get to the far end. We've both been distracted. We've both been more stressed. We've both been you know a little out of it and uh, we forgot to do the, the <laughs> final video basically yeah so we and yeah so we moored for the night at the top of the tidy big flight um you to recover <laughs> and prepare try, try to prepare for the what would happen the next time we, we got <laughs> off and moving again it was a, it still was a nice day but it was just not as planned really yeah and the chips were sacrificed to the and that's really why we bad got obstruction that's really why we got stressed because we lost our chips the rain according in spain falls mainly on the plane, on the plane. <sighs> <laughs> Michael the was why we don't sing. Michael was talking uh, teaching George how to speak elocution lessons this morning. I was trying. He got to boof <laughs> and <laughs> there was a chip shop at the marina. <laughs> I like condiments. Just because we've been talking about poo nuggets today. Yeah, but uh, that's not today in this. Ah, right. That's right. in the future. That's in the future. In the future. There'll be conversations about poo nuggets. That's something to look forward to. Yeah. Subscribe. <laughs>